So folks, one thing we really need to understand is that while old Donnie and his favorite daughter Ivanka, they're not getting along anymore, their relationship is clearly in the garbage bin, they are deeply intertwined still, like father, like daughter, especially in the legal trouble they're facing, not only directly with the Letitia James case in New York and the civil penalties, where they're both named officially as defendants, but increasingly and more immediately, what's happening with the J6 case in Washington and how Ivanka has been subpoenaed. Now, what's critical is that tonight there's been a series of legal blows to Trump that have really accelerated the pace of everything. And this also includes Ivanka, who, according to a new report, has been hit with a devastating punch, guys. It is a knockout blow that gives her no option. This is her being found to have done something that certainly violates laws. She's been proven to do so. And that puts her not only in direct criminal peril, but in a position where she has no choice to flip on daddy. The issue is, however, is that daddy is almost certainly going to flip on her first. But what happened is a couple things tonight. One, there was a new revelation that among other things, FBI agents have been afraid to take on Trump. But as somebody is noting, as some people are noting, that era may actually be over now. Um, attempting to make it sound as if it is Republicans and conservatives and he and all of his fellow members of that committee saying, well, they're the victims. I mean, here's Josh Hawley on January 6th throwing up his, his fist and then running for his life. In what way has law enforcement been unfair to people like him uh, fist boy Josh Hawley is no victim, uh, Joy. Uh, he's someone that encouraged uh, and rooted for the rioters as they ransacked the Capitol on January 6. Uh, but the story that he's referring to is really troubling, and I'll tell you why. It's because it shows that the Trump tactic of creating artificial red lines continues to work. We saw this in 2016 when he said the election was going to be rigged. And guess who was trying to rig the election? The Russians. And what did that do to the Obama administration? It made them hold back on publicly calling out the Russians. During the Mueller investigation, Donald Trump said it would be a red line to look at his finances. And what ended up happening? Mueller held back on looking at his finances. And now, when it's so clear that this guy's got you know, a trove of classified information that the Department of Justice wants to seek, he, Donald Trump is in the heads of FBI agents who are afraid that this would cross some Trump red line and that they would be called out. And so it's essentially letting him win and, and rewarding somebody's bad behavior because you're afraid of the backlash. Thank God Jack Smith and Merrick Garland and the team persisted because what did they ultimately end up finding? Exactly what the evidence showed was going to be there, a trove of highly sensitive classified documents. Right. I mean, I so you can see, and there's been a lot of discussion, if you look at it on the internet, that, you know, when, before the actual search happened last, last fall, last summer, there was a lot of apprehension because people were worried about uh, retribution, people were worried about the politics, and there was a lot of tension within the FBI, not related to Garland or anything, but like the lower and middle levels about doing it. It happened anyway, which was the right thing. But what this demonstrates is that Trump had been able to, for a long time, and even after leaving office, been able able to paint up these walls to protect himself even as his own cronies went down and even as he was clearly implicated in various criminal schemes like the Cohen one and all of that. Nonetheless, that power doesn't exist anymore. And despite that apprehension, the search went down and Jack Smith, unlike those unnamed FBI people, does not be, seem to be showing any sniff of fear. But what's also critical is Trump is doing it to himself. Well, to himself. One of his former advisors just gave a very interesting interview, a very conservative source, making it clear that he feels Trump is getting indicted. And the basic reason is that he is running and bringing all the attention to himself. All right. Now, given that all that you know about the president's legal peril from the perspective of being a prosecutor for so many years, knowing the president, following not on the inside as a legal team, but from the outside and knowing all the players, uh, do you expect he will be indicted before the debates begin in July and August for by either the Georgia Fulton County prosecutor, by Jack Smith, by the New York district attorney? Do you expect an indictment of the former president? 
I think the most likely place it will happen is New York. New York first, the special counsel second, Georgia third. Uh, but in terms of the seriousness of the peril for the president, I put the special counsel above either of those. Yeah, I, um, uh, so in brief, do you expect an indictment by July? I expect that New York probably would act. I don't, I don't know when the special counsel will act by that time, but my guess is that New York would act by that time. Can someone run for office and do debates and give interviews when they're under indictment and, and not make their situation worse? No, I think it's impossible for them not to make the situation worse. Although what I would say to you is that given the limited nature of the New York case, I don't know that he's going to be getting a whole lot of questions about the Stormy Daniels situation anyway. I think it seems to be a pretty cut and dry situation. Um, and I don't know that he'd make his situation markedly worse. Um, but every time you open your mouth, as you know, in this kind of situation, you run the real risk of, 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 it, of it adding complications uh, to a case where you could lose your liberty. And that's why defense lawyers always rightfully tell their clients, to keep quiet, um, because you don't need to make that situation more complicated because your liberty is... So that's Chris Christie. Again, former friend of Trump, worked for Trump, uh, was basically an employee of the Trump 2024 or 2020 campaign as an advisor and debate prep coach or whatnot. Uh, one of the first big uh, Republicans to endorse Trump back in 2015, 2016. And what he's saying is the reason Trump and by extension Ivanka and Jared and all of them are in trouble above all is, yeah, he did illegal stuff, but it's because he's running and he's drawing all the attention to himself. Again, if Trump won, would have just actually not kept the documents after being asked to give them back, but two, just, you know, retired away and became a typical post-career president where you give your speeches and you do your charity work and, you know, you come out every now and then to speak about one or two issues that very much matter to you, and then you retreat to the spotlight, uh, out of the spotlight, he probably wouldn't be facing any of these legal troubles, certainly not related to uh, at the same extent. Um, fair or not, that's what would have happened, but he's bringing it on himself. But why this matters, guys, is that tonight there's been a new breakdown about how Ivanka, based on the statements she's made to the J6 committee and maybe other sources as well, almost certainly lied under oath. She's been found to have lied under oath by a lot of people. And what that demonstrates is that daddy can flip on her, but she also has the opportunity to flip on him. Nonetheless, guys, her being guilty of a criminal activity gives her very little wiggle room. Start with what Trump's going to do. Evan Corcoran, you, he worked with you in the DOJ in the U.S. Attorney's Office. So he's working for Trump. That's fine. There's people, you get your right to a lawyer. I have no problem with that. He drops a certification that he clearly has qualms about because he won't sign it. And they bring in Christina Bob, former OAN anchor and Trump fan, to sign. Literally, they bring her in to sign it. And she even has some qualms because she writes a little note. What is Evan Corcoran thinking? I mean, honestly, as a lawyer, I'd be like, hey, you're putting me, is it that important to work for Donald Trump that Evan Corcoran is on the yeah. verge? He had a lawyer up. He's literally lawyered up now. And his career is in jeopardy. His license is in jeopardy. His liberty could be in jeopardy. Was it worth it to draft that thing up? Because clearly he knew it wasn't accurate. I have to be honest. He knew that. That's why he wouldn't sign it. He, uh, you know, I can't say what Evan Corcoran was thinking, but Donald Trump basically burns everyone who comes within arm's reach of him. That's true of his, you know, cabinet officials when he was president. It's true of his lawyers who end up being disbarred and potentially prosecuted. It's hard to understand why people would compromise themselves in these ways for Donald Trump. And, and here's the here's the beauty of it. Once Donald Trump gets indicted, Dean, and he will be indicted, he will throw every single person under the bus, including his own family members, if it will reduce his prison term by just one day or one hour. So hold on tight, because that's coming. So that's Glenn Kirshner uh, laying it out fantastically, as usual, saying that Trump, like, look, he, it's not like he can flip on anybody to, 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 to avoid uh, penalties. He is the biggest fish. He's the kingpin of every investigation. He's the kingpin. But if he, out of spite, out of desperation, out of ego, out of a sense that if I'm going down, I'm taking every other SOB, including my kids with me, he'll do it. 
He will do it. If he can shave a day off his penalty, like he said, he will do it. And this puts Ivanka in a really awkward position because she know, she has to know this. She has to know this. And what this notes here is that Ivanka being found to have committed perjury or something very similar to it, like a technical definition, she has no way out except to flip on daddy. And this, you know, being proven guilty doesn't give her a lot of wiggle room. Good morning, Steph. I hate that I can't see you. I know. I know. We're, <laughs> we're having we're having rain in LA, which means everything else is canceled. Um, uh. <laughs> so let's talk. Uh, you tweeted, "Ivanka and Jared get subpoenaed. Donald is about to be indicted." So the question arises: Who will throw who under the bus? Um, you actually answered your own question. You said, "Once Trump is indicted, he'll throw everyone <laughs> on whom he has compromising information under the bus." It's what narcissists do. So, what do you foresee here? You know, given the one-two justice punch this week of Fonnie Willis down in Georgia and Jack Smith up in D.C., you know, first of all, it, it really looks like accountability is finally on the horizon. Um, and I, I think once Donald Trump is indicted, I prosecuted a lot of narcissists. Mm -hmm. Once they decide to cooperate and uh, plead guilty, and not all of them do. Some of them will, you know, hold out. They'll want their trial and we'll give Donald Trump his trial and he'll be convicted. Um, but if he senses that, you know, there's something in it for him, if he starts giving up others, he will give up everybody. I mean, he'll yep. give up. He'll give up his wife. He'll give up his children. He'll give up everybody if it means one minute less of Say it prison slower. time for him. That's what I would expect uh, Donald Trump to do. Well, that's what Michael Cohen's been saying forever. Um, let me run one other tweet by you. Uh, Black Knight tweets, Jared and Ivanka have some fun decisions to make when they testify to Jack Smith's grand jury. They can't change the story they gave the J6 committee, but they also don't know what other witnesses have told Smith. So no matter what, they could get busted for lying. Yes, but here's the thing. Um, we will often let witnesses cure the perjury. That's a term of art in criminal justice circles. So it was not at all unusual, Steph, for me to present somebody to the grand jury for the first time. And because they were scared, because they were loyal to the target of the investigation, because they had a fear of self-incrimination, they lied. Happens every day. We will often give them the opportunity to cure the perjury, which means going back into the grand jury and saying, okay, mm. I was trying to protect Donald Trump. I was trying to protect myself. I was afraid of being a snitch. I'm sorry I lied. Here is the truth. Uh. And we will, in essence, give them a pass for the prior perjury because we never want to take our eyes off the prize, which is the biggest criminal fish. So it wouldn't surprise me if Jack Smith worked something out to address Ivanka and Jared's lies to the J6 committee, there's little doubt that they lied. I mean, Ivanka said, I couldn't recall my father calling the vice president of the United States a pussy, even though there's <laughs> lots of evidence that she heard it, she repeated it, she discussed it with others. Mm. She wasn't willing to say it before the J6 investigators, which constitutes technically not perjury, but what we call a 1001 false statement. Uh, it's it's virtually the same thing as perjury. So what it notes there is that, as Glenn notes, she's almost certainly committed perjury. Uh, there's also arguments that she committed perjury in the Letitia James investigation. But because these people are like Jack are saying, look, we found that you've committed perjury. We found you to be guilty of this and we're willing to bring it all the way um, to the court of law. You have to flip. And we'll, you know, because you want to protect yourself. And as noted, you're not the big fish and will cure the perjury. There's no way out here for, uh, for, for, for Donald Trump, I don't think. But Ivanka has even fewer options than before. You know, she's already ruined everything. And either she's going to eat the perjury conviction or she's going to tell the truth and alienate the last group of people that maybe like her. Her old friends don't like her. The MAGA people still like her when she's around, but they won't if she sends daddy to prison. Everything is burning down around. Trump lawyers are going to get arrested in their underwear. It's just going to be a big mess. And it's all going to start maybe with daddy's little girl.